So, dear brothers and sisters, uh, uh, in Christ, uh, uh, last week uh, we studied about, uh, you see, the church and uh, who is actually the church. If you see, the faithful uh, followers uh, of uh, Christ are called as the church uh, in the Bible. So, therefore, we saw that uh, who are the faithful followers of Christ, who rule with Christ for a thousand years are uh, none other than the one lakh and forty-four thousand. That one we studied uh, in book of uh, Revelation 14 chapter. You see, it speaks about uh, 1 lakh 44,000 who are uh, uh, followers of Christ. Uh, and uh, these are those uh, who are not defiled with women for their virgins. They follow the lamb with us over the goat. Uh, so all these things we saw that it has got a spiritual meaning. This is not a literal meaning. Uh, those who are not defiled with women means uh, there are uh, women in the Bible is called as a true church. And uh, oh, those who are defiled with the woman means uh, those who are not defiled with a false church. And uh, for their virgins means we see that uh, there are 10 virgins uh, and a foolish virgin or uh, the wise virgin. And they follow Christ, uh, they are faithful followers of Christ uh, and be faithful to him till their uh, death. So, dear brethren, so if you see one like 44,000 seems to be a very small number, isn't it? But uh, if you see for the overall period of uh, 2022 years, it actually comes to a 71% average per year and uh, it comes uh, nearly 6% per month. So almost it is like uh, every uh, one person is being selected uh, once in five days. Therefore, uh, dear brethren, uh, is there uh, no other uh, group that goes to the heavenly salvation? Because Many people try to follow Christ, but uh, many and not everybody can remain faithful till their death. So what about the, those people? What about those people who are already consecrated, but not faithful till their death? Is there any other class uh, apart from uh, the lack and 44,000 who go to the heavenly salvation? If you see, yes, uh, there is another class uh, which go to uh, heavenly salvation, but they are not the faithful ones, but yet uh, they are the followers of Christ. So we saw that the two groups are there, M and N. Okay, N are the one lakh and forty-four thousand, but M they also try to follow the footsteps of Christ, but uh, due to various reasons, they hinder back and fall back in the race and lose the crown. About them, it is mentioned in Revelation seven chapter verse nine. Revelation 7 9. Can somebody read, brother? Gopal, brother, can you read? Okay, brother, can you read? Revelation 7, 7 9. Yeah. After this, I, I beheld and and lo, a uh, great multitudes which no man could number of all nations and kinder kinders and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands so you see there is other group also they are called as the great multitude, uh, which no man can number. They are chosen from all nations, uh, all kindreds and people. That means the consecrated are chosen from all over the world, not only from Israel, but one thing is that uh, they are not of the faithful class. Therefore, they are seen standing before the throne. You see, what is the church promised? Is the church promised to stand before the throne or to sit on the throne? If we are faithful, we are promised to sit on the throne and rule with Jesus for a thousand years. Let us read uh, Revelation 3.21. Uh, Suraj brother, can you read Revelation 3.21? Yes, brother. Revelation 3.21. So it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome, overcame and I am sit down, sit down with my father in his throne. See, to him that overcome, even as I have overcome, I will grant them the privilege to sit uh, them on my throne. So, dear brethren, if you see, huh, there are a lot of things to overcome. 
How? How should you overcome? Even as Christ overcome. You see, that means there are a lot of obstacles in our life. There will be a lot of hindrances, a lot of trials, tribulations. But God's children should overcome all these things. How? How? Why? Because Jesus overcome all those trials. It says, he that overcomes, even as I overcome, then they will be given the opportunity to sit on the throne and not to stand before the throne. If we are faithful, if you overcome everything cheerfully, then we will be sitting on the throne. This is the group who was standing before the throne. That means, who is the one who is sitting on the throne? It is the kings. And who is the one who is standing before the throne? It is the servant class of people. That means the great multitude will be like the servant to the king of kings and a lot of Lord Jesus and the church. They will also huh, be in heavenly salvation, but they will lose the opportunity to get the divine nature. They will be like angels in the angelic nature in the heavenly realm. Therefore, if you see within our sacrifice, you see our covenant with God is to sacrifice voluntarily. That is what we covenanted uh, with our God, you see, that we will offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, uh, you see. So, what do you mean by that? Volunteer sacrifice. Uh, that means we are called to sacrifice voluntarily. That means cheerfully lay down our life on the altar. This is not literal sacrifice. Daily we need to live a life which is pleasing to the light. Isn't it? This one, we are to do it voluntarily without any compulsion, without any force. The lack and 44,000, they do it cheerfully, even as Jesus did it. You see, there was a lot of trials and hindrances in the life of Jesus, isn't it? He had a lot of tribulations, but how did he overcome? He overcome cheerfully. He did the little of the Lord happily. That is the difference. But this great multitude, you see, they don't know, they don't lay down their life cheerfully. They try to you see, hinder from sacrifice to the Lord. They try to hinder by walking in the narrow way. You see, they want to voluntarily and cheerfully, zealously walk on the narrow way. They try to, you see, to come back and fall down. Therefore, a lot of things that draw us away from the crown. What are those things? Let us read Romans 8, chapter 35 to 37. Uh, home brother, can you read? Romans 8, 35 to 37. Okay. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or women or, or nakedness or peril or sword? Okay. So this means... These are the things which will come in our life that will separate us from the love of Christ. What are those things? Tribulations, distress, persecutions, famine, nakedness, perils, sword. All these things will come in the path of a consecrated day. That is the time that we need to show our faithfulness to the Lord. What does it verse say? Continue. Continue with that. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as a sheep or the salter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. See, it says, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. All the day, we are killed. That is the meaning of sacrifice, voluntary sacrifice. Uh, offer your body as a living sacrifice on the altar. You see, dear brother, in all these things, we should be more than conquerors, which not uh, cheerfully, voluntarily, we should sacrifice and lay down uh, on the altar of the Lord. But the great multitude, they draw back from their uh, sacrifice, uh, dear brother, and that is uh, why they lose the crown. What is the reason if you say fear? You say fear of what? Uh, fear of death, uh, dear brother. And in uh, Hebrews 2.15, it says, no, Huh? See, Hebrews uh, 2.15. Hebrews 2.15. Can uh, Suraj, brother, can you read? Yes, brother. And deliver them who uh, who through fear of death were all their life, uh, lifetime subject to bondage. See, during all the lifetime, they were submit to bondage. Why? Because of fear of death. Uh, 
fear to offer and be dead for christ's sake that is the thing that is hindering from you see being faithful to the god even that is the reason they seek god only when there is trouble isn't it otherwise when everything goes on normal they don't try to come near to the lord they don't try to do anything for the lord voluntarily dear brother that is the reason they are not sitting on the throne but standing before the throne now what was there in their hand let us read that verse brother uh, gopal brother can you read revelation 7 uh, chapter brother 7 chapter verse 9 read brother again revelation 7 9 Suresh brother, can you uh, read Gopal brother? Read. Uh, okay, Gopal brother, I think uh, your uh, audio is not audible. Your microphone, I think, still is a problem. Okay, Suresh brother, you can read. Yes, brother. Hmm. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and uh, kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. both with white robes and palm in their hands see they are having palms in their uh, hands and they were white wearing white robe it seems now what is the meaning of uh, uh, having the palm in their hand you see palm palm branches uh, in the olden days whenever the king used to win a war even he used to be welcomed uh, into the city uh, the people used to wave the palm branches uh, and the palm branches was a sign of victory you see in the bible it is a sign of victory david therefore when david won victories the people welcomed him by waving the palm branches similarly when jesus came to jerusalem on a you see colt of an ass he was welcomed by the people by waving the palm branches what did the people say at the time they said in john 12:13 it says that Huh? Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel. See, King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So it was a sign of victory. Here, the great multitude are having palm in their branches. Means uh, that means uh, they are overcome. They have fought and overcome. But how? Not voluntarily. But only when they are forced. To, only when they are compelled. That is the time they overcome. That is the reason they lose the crown. They are standing before the. a uh, throne dear brethren therefore they were also wearing the white robe it seems what is the meaning of white robe what does the bible say the same question was asked by the elder to the angel let us read that in revelation 7 chapter verse 13 and 14 revelation 7 chapter verse 13 and 14 can uh, somebody read and one of the elder answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of lamb See, these are they who washed their robes uh, made them white in great tribulation what is the meaning of this white robes how did they wash they washed it in the blood of the lamb which seems uh, dear brethren what is this uh, robe of righteousness uh, you see huh? we are all filthy before god because of the sacrifice of christ god has imputed his righteousness to us and we are uh, righteous before the sight of god therefore this robe is the white robe which we are received when we consecrate ourselves to god You see, this is the robe of righteousness. Uh, read Revelation nineteen eight. Home brother, can you read Revelation nineteen eight? And to her was granted that she she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. See, white robe. is the uh, uh, righteousness of the saints that means we are all sinners how are we counted righteous before god only through christ as we consecrate our lives to god god gives us a robe of righteousness you see this one we need to maintain neatly and clean how do we maintain when we are in the world you see whenever we commit one mistake in our thoughts in words and in deeds 
immediately a spot comes on this uh, robe you see imagine you say this white uh, shirt is there huh what will happen if small the dirt comes and falls on this one it will look very ugly that should be cleaned immediately if it is not cleaned immediately what will happen now the dirt will remain like that only and it will get accumulated and the shirt will completely get spoiled so similarly whenever we do any sin a small or a big or anything immediately a spot remains on the robe of righteousness you can also read uh, isaiah 64 6 and isaiah 61 10 later you can read kindly make a notes of that one so immediately we need to approach uh, lord and uh, ask forgiveness and repent of it uh, and make amendments uh, so this is what the lack and 44000 do but the great multitude they avoid doing it they accumulate uh, the spots upon spots or spots upon spots ultimately they will become in such a way that uh, their robes will be full dirty so they can't be taken to heaven now what should the uh, lord do the lord should give uh, this robe of uh, righteousness a clean wash how does he wash usually how does they wash in the dobi huh they nicely pick the cloth heat it against the rock and beat it you see they rub it with a soda washing soda and clean it no similarly they also will be put into lot of trouble and persecution so that uh, you see the great multitude may wash their robes uh, whenever their trouble comes uh, they will seek the lord now that is the time they'll appreciate the blood of christ and wash their robes and clean themselves uh, of all filthiness let us read malachi 3rd chapter 2 to 3 uh suraj brother can you read malachi 3 2 to 3 so brother malachi 3 uh, 2 and 3 okay but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appears for he is like a rain fire's fire and like fuller's soap and he sells uh, seed as a rain uh, refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver and they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness you see he says who shall abide the day of his coming christ coming he shall stand like a fuller soap that means what uh, washing soap uh, how the dobe washes cleanly similarly christ will purify and cleanse this uh, great multitude how putting into the trouble when the trouble comes in their life uh, they will uh, come near to the lord that is the time they appreciate the lord's sacrifice and remember the covenant with the lord and be faithful to god but that time you see it will be very late the door will be closed they will lose the reward but uh, again they will attain the heavenly salvation but they will lose the reward of a being of the lack and 44000 so let us read one more verse in first corinthians third chapter 11 to 15 read brother home brother or uh, suraj brother anybody can read first corinthians 3 11 to 15 hmm. Okay, finding it difficult, brother. Um, I'm try- I'm close, close by. Sorry. Okay, Suraj, brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Hmm. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by. fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what worth it is if any man's work abide mm. what mm. he had built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet uh, so as by fire see it says huh? every man's work shall be tried there is no other foundation than the foundation of jesus upon jesus christ if somebody has to build it they have to build it with gold silver precious stone or with wood hay and stubble you see dear brethren it says six types of uh, construction is going to be built upon this foundation it seems and how will this uh, construction be tested it will be put to fire it seems 
and whichever burns out it means that uh, they shall lose their reward that means uh, their building is not proper but if they are uh, after putting to the fire if the work still remain they shall receive the reward is himself this is not a literal uh, building this is not a literal fire dear brethren the foundation of christ means uh, upon the doctrine of christ upon the faith on jesus christ we need to build the character what type of character we are going to build whether going to build the character of gold a character like silver character like gems that shine brightly or shall we build a character which is so huh, fragile that as soon as it is put to fire it will burn out like wood hay and stubble you see among all these things huh, if you put uh, all the six things to fire what will happen uh? immediately the wood hay and stubble will burn out fastly is it but what about gold and silver and precious stones they won't burn out uh, they will melt and shine the more better uh, similarly when we are put into trials dear brethren we need to show the real character of christ in our life if somebody is showing a real beauty of character in the life that means they are part of the lack and 44000 because without god's permission nothing will happen in the life of god's children so each and every trial is permitted by the lord dear brethren when we are uh, burned out uh, that means our character is spoiled uh, if we react violently in very a uh, manner which uh, doesn't bring glory to god that means we are losing our crown therefore what do you say yeah huh? if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward he shall receive a reward of lakh and 44000 but if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer a loss he shall not receive the reward of lakh and 44000 divine nature but yet he shall be saved how yet so as by fire if a person is escaped by fire similarly these shall be saved go to the heavenly salvation and remain like angels but not uh, uh, be like a uh, lord jesus and sit with him on the throne instead of sitting on the throne they shall stand before the throne and be the servants therefore read one more verse uh, home brother read brother first corinthians 5 5 brother home brother yes brother first corinthians 5 hmm Yes. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the place, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. See, hmm? it says such a person. That means ones who are covenanted and who love the world more, they shall be. Ah, permitted. They shall be hand over to the devil. It seems. You see, ah, what will the devil do? Ah, if the Lord hand over such a person to devil, he will give lot of pain, sorrow, tribulation in such a way that our flesh will be destroyed. Flesh means what? A fleshly character. All the worldly character will be destroyed. You know, then why? Not because of hatred. God. Ah, we say destroys our flesh it is because of love why because we actually covenanted that we are going to offer our life as a living sacrifice so once we offer we need to live as per it if we don't continue to sacrifice voluntarily then our flesh will be destroyed this body will be destroyed by the lord himself imagine dear brethren that is the reason we need to be faithful to god until our death and do it voluntarily therefore hmm If they lose the crown, what will happen? In Revelation seven, it tells no. Uh, read, brother. Uh, Suraj, brother, read. Revelation seven, chapter fifteen to seventeen. Next. Mm. Okay, brother. Uh, Revelation seven, fifteen to seventeen. Okay. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve Him uh, day and night in His temple? And He that sit on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. neither thirst any more neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them on to living fountains of water and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes therefore are they before the throne because of this reason they lost the crown and are standing before the throne not sitting on the throne they are serving god when then if they would have served god if they would have remained faithful to god now they would have sat on the throne but now they are not faithful hence they are 
sitting not sitting standing before the throne and serving the lord as the servants huh eh? and what will god do to them na god shall wipe away their tears why because they will weep oh lord we lost the crown please have mercy please give us will god give us no god can't do anything dear brethren once uh, if we lose the crown you see nothing can be done if we put tears now there is opportunity but after everything is over if we start weeping nothing would benefit dear brethren therefore these are the great multitude you see who go to the heavenly salvation you see and uh, they also will be a part of the church uh, but uh, they are going to be of the servant class dear brethren therefore you see uh, now there is a time for us uh, to remain uh, faithful to the lord so we should use the opportunity now okay instead of weeping later you see we should weep now uh, these are like uh, esau and jacob no uh, we have seen no the story of uh, esau and jacob uh, esau what did he do just for a little bit of a meal he sold his birthright to jacob his brother then after lot of weeping he tried to get it back but could not get it back dear brother and these are the people who are like esau just because of some worldly benefit they will leave the lord they leave the crown and after realizing they come weeping but it will be too late dear brother let us read hebrews 12 16 17 hebrews 12 chapter 16 and 17 uh suraj brother can you read sure brother hmm. 16 and 17 hmm lest there be any uh, for fornicator or profane person as isau who for one uh, morsel of meat sold his birthright for ye know how that afterward would when he would have inherited the blessings he was rejected for he found no place of repentance hmm. though he sought it carefully with tears with tears you see let none of you be like esau who sold his birthright and let us sought it but could not you see get it even though he carefully sought it with tears said your brother so now is the chance to repent before losing it after losing it there is no use dear brother so we should need to be very careful dear brother other example is about the king and the queen You see Psalms forty-five chapter. You can read it later. Everything. So Psalms forty-five. It says Jesus is compared to a king, while the church is compared to a queen. You see now how is the queen brought before the king? She is brought in golden attire, golden robe. You see how is the queen? Read Psalms forty-five nine. How many brother read brother? Psalms forty-five nine brother. Huh. Psalms forty-five nine. Nine. Bordeaux has cast off and put the us. Psalms forty-five nine. You can you can see the screen and read, but that's not a problem. I'm I'm reading on yeah, Psalms forty-five nine. Hmm. or to has cast off and put us to same no 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 wrong you're reading wrong psalm 45 9 uh, suraj brother can you read okay brother oh, king's sorry. daughter were among thy honorable women upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of ophir see upon thy right hand shall stand the queen in golden attire huh how is the queen fully covered with gold if we need to be covered with divine nature we need to be of the queen class who sits along the king on the throne so what is advice given to the queen by the king let us read same 45 10 and 11 verse brother 10th and 11th verse there can o daughter and consider and incline thine ear first also thine own people and they thy father's house so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty 
for he is thy lord and worship to him see what is advice forget thy own people and forget the father's house then only the king will greatly desire the beauty simsa now who is the own people it is the world father's house means father had him house this world once we are consecrated to the lord once we offered our body as a living sacrifice to the lord we need to forget this world and the worldly people never have fellowship with them you see the denangli our king will desire our beauty what is the beauty ha huh? ha huh? it says she is covered with the fine gold correct no huh? what type of gold let us read psalms 45 14 verse 14 brother same in verse 14 ha huh? she shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needle work the virgin her compassion that follow her shall be brought unto thee see it says ha huh? she shall be covered in raiment of needle work you see ha huh? needle work how the needle work will be done is it so easy now it is a very painful process take the needle poke it again bring it up poke it keep on poking poking and uh, use the golden thread to beautifully decorate the robe similarly god has given the robe of righteousness upon this one christ's golden character has to be embroidered it is not a easy matter it is a very painful process poke here pain there pain there everything is a painful process but then only our king will like us at your grand therefore it is a difficult process but yet we need to do if we love the lord we will do it and uh, it says our virgins our companion was with her sims who are these virgins the queen is the like and 44000 the companions are the great multitude dear brethren yeah? therefore in the bible it says no wise virgin foolish virgin matthew 25th chapter huh? you can read it in your house matthew 25th chapter verses 1 to 4 he says the kingdom of heaven is like a huh? 10 virgins went to meet the lord five of them were wise and five of them were foolish virgin nishimsa and what was the difference between the wise virgin and the foolish virgin it says the wise virgin took the oil in the lamp as well as in their vessel but the foolish virgins took the oil only in the lamp let us read revel uh, uh, matthew 25 uh, 3 and uh, 4 uh, suraj brother can you read matthew 25 3 and 4 yes brother matthew 25 3 and 4 hmm okay uh they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps you see that is the difference they did not took any oil in the vessel but the wise took the oil in the vessel so what is the meaning of this one dear brethren dear brethren if you see you see oil in the bible and the lamp in the bible means the word of god you see and we all know oil means what holy spirit in the olden days this oil was used to anoint You see, kings, uh, prophets, uh, uh, princes. Uh, so, oil in the Bible represents uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see, the oil was in the lamp. That means, who is the Holy Spirit? Uh, Bible, the Word of God is filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, okay, but uh, if there the Holy Spirit is there, that is sufficient. Uh? No, where the Holy Spirit should, Holy Spirit should be there. He should be in the vessel. Who are the vessel? We are the vessel of the Lord. You see, dear brethren. So, just by having the Bible in the hand is not sufficient. We should have the fruits of the Holy Spirit within us. We should have the Christ likeness within us. Then only we can be the part of the wise virgins. Then only Christ will love us. Therefore, what happened when the oil was not there? They were sent to go and purchase from the market. Read Matthew twenty-five. uh matthew 25 9 uh suraj brother read matthew 25 9 mm. okay brother mm. but the wise answered uh, saying not so least there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself hmm continue hmm 
and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut see the door was shut uh, they told no if i give it won't be sufficient for both you go and get it from the market uh, by the time they went and purchase from the market uh, the door was closed now why purchase from the market uh, huh? holy spirit should be purchased from the market is no sir what do you mean by purchase purchase means we need to spend something it is for the cost holy spirit is not free god doesn't give us holy spirit free of cost dear brethren we need to sacrifice he is the seller where is it sold it is sold in the world we need to go and stand in the world boldly for the lord's sake our sacrifice should cost us something then only lord will give us the holy spirit uh, the spirit of christ uh, in us to develop christ like this dear brethren therefore by the time they realize the mistake and go to the world and come the door is shut therefore you see oil should be there in us we should have that zeal one more example is about gideon you see gideon what happened you can read this one in judges 7 chapter in your house okay i'll just tell you the story huh in judges 7 chapter there is an incident given where the midianites huh you say nearly around 1 lakh 20 uh, 1000 you see about them who came uh, to war on the people of israel and that is the time that god chose uh, gideon as a warrior and god tells her uh, you call give a call to the people of israel let them call who is ready for the war let them come and immediately you know what happens dear brethren 32000 people come for the war at the time uh, god tells her this 32000 is very much give them a shout saying whoever is fearful and very afraid of war they can return to the home so immediately what happened you say dear brother 22000 turn back it seems judges 72 home brother can you read judges 72 judges 72 home brother you are there online Yes, sir. I'm online. I'm, I'm looking for it. Okay, Suraj, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. And the Lord said on uh, on to Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel warn themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Hmm. Continue. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid. let them return and depart early from mount gilead and hmm. and their return of the people 20 and 2000 and there remain 10000 you see immediately give a command who is fearful and afraid let them turn back 22000 turn back so 10000 was there god said 10000 is also more bring them to the water and test them then when they were brought to the water there were two types of people who were drinking the water one they put their mouth directly to the water and drank it and other uh, took the water in their hand uh, lifted their head and uh, they drink the water so only those people were 300 those who put them out directly by 9700 those 9700 were not selected dear brethren let us read this verse judges 7 uh, chapter uh, judges 7 uh, chapter uh, verse 5 and 6 brother ah uh. so he brought down the people onto the water and the lord said unto gideon every one that left left of the water with his tongue as a dog lamp him start to sit by him so like was every one that bowed down upon his knees to drink and a number of them that lap putting their hand to their mouth with 300 men see there are 300 men so these 300 men were selected and the 9700 were sent off to the and it is through these 300 people the victory was given you know how the victory was given everybody carried a, a mud pot a pitcher in their hand inside the picture was a you see a fire you see uh, in their uh, hand and uh, later they had a trumpet uh, you see they had the lamps uh, in their hand uh, that was inside the picture and they had the trumpet uh, there then 
so loudly they blew the trumpet they broke the pitcher and let the light uh, shine brightly as they did uh, this one you know dear brethren what happened huh? even before the people of israel went to war immediately the enemies fought among themselves and totally destroyed uh, so what is this one what is the meaning of this one dear brethren huh? the midianites uh, are the enemies of god's children they have come to fight uh, against god's children ephesians 6 12 it says no our fight is not uh, against with the flesh and blood but with principalities powers and uh, against the uh, uh, wicked uh, uh, spiritual powers uh, in heaven you see that means the satan and the devil uh. so how do we fight him uh? not by strength uh, not by numbers uh, dear brethren 32000 were for more very more god said over is afraid let him immediately turn back 22000 immediately went back it seems uh, this means many are called few are chosen if we tell we need to sacrifice and do the lord's will we need to lay down our life for the lord how many people will come not many you see you are also seeing no this bible study it is going almost nearly uh, more than 7 to 8 months uh, how many people were there but today how many people are there huh? why because they are afraid of the truth you see they are afraid to consecrate and leave their life for pleasing to the lord they went back to the world many are called only few are chosen you see it uh, but among them again the filtration they brought to the water water in the bible means the truth how do we receive the truth we just drinking the water and the truth just for curiosity curiosity sake or to understand god's word that is the may depend dear brethren some people are there they will be ever learning brother you see keep on learning 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 they will learn 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 forever but never uh, understand the truth at all you see but uh, we should be very careful uh, about what we hear and listen the brethren therefore let us read some people think that uh, understanding so deep the bible is not at all important uh, you see the people of israel were rejected because the lack of knowledge they had lot of zeal lot of uh, uh, you see uh, interest uh, and love on the lord but what was the use uh, that love was not as per the scriptures uh, Read Romans ten chapter two and three. Suraj brother, can you read Romans ten chapter two and three? Brother, mm-hmm. for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Very clear. Israel people had the zeal, but not according to the knowledge of the Lord. they want about to do their own will and thought that god should accept this as god's will how will god accept if somebody is not obedient to the word of god we should be obedient to the word of god what does the bible say the soul dies even if you even after the bible says the soul dies if you still start believing that the soul doesn't die it goes to here there and all and hell is a place of torture while it says hell is a grave that means what we are trying to establish our own righteousness than the righteousness uh, of god uh, because our zeal is not as per the knowledge of god god will reject us how god rejected people of israel similarly so we should understand the truth clearly filter it take it uh, assimilate digest it uh, dear brethren though it is against our all previous idea we should accept the word of god these are the 300 people these are the faithful lakh and 44000 only through these people god will give the victory and salvation to the whole world you see read uh, second timothy 37 home brother read brother second timothy 37 home brother are you there second timothy 37 correct consider what i say and the lord give the understanding in all things Second Timothy three seven. You can see the display and read. Second Timothy. Yeah. Ever ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, ever learning, every time learning, never come to the knowledge of truth. We should not be in such a way. Keep on drinking, drinking, drinking. But what is the use? They were there. We need to scrutinize. Uh, so they were sent back to the world only through these people. The victory was given. How? they hit their lamps inside the pitcher the blue the trumpet that means they broke the pitcher let the shine 
lamp uh, let the lamp shine brightly then they blew the trumpet the meaning of this one they began we need to broke our earth and vessel shine let the shine let the light shine brightly that means the beauty of character in us we should be let to shine brightly among the world and not only that one we need to blow the trumpet blow the trumpet of the truth this truth to how many people we are told there are so many christians in this world who don't know the truth who don't know the beauty of the christ a thousand years rule who don't know the beauty of hell soul three worlds three ways you see it are we witnessing to them they would then we need to proclaim this it is through these people only god will get the victory therefore ha huh? there are two people group of people are going to the heavenly salvation first is a like and 44000 what in the divine nature will rule with christ for 1000 years but apart from that one those who fall down from that uh, grace uh, will come to the great multitude of them this will be part of the you see heavenly salvation so this is the end of the church subject if you uh, kindly go through the notes and the video recording if any doubts if you have uh, we will definitely clarify all the th- 